Hey, I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex. Happy to be here covering my top five games of November. I run through my top five games every month here on Rotto Runs Through, and uh, I played 22 new games in the month of November, so this is the top five of that. Sorry it's coming a few days late here. I've spent the past week at PAX Unplugged in Philadelphia, and I saw a lot of great games there, but those are going to be in December because those were December games, so this is covering the stuff I played earlier in the month, which included BGG Con, so I saw a lot of new hotness there as well. So let's get into it. Top five games of November. <laughs> My number five is The Perfect Wave from The Op. Uh, if you're looking for a family weight game for a welcoming game, The Perfect Wave really caught me by surprise. I, I didn't really think that much about it, but I really liked it, and I've played it with like three or four different groups of people and all of them have really enjoyed it as that sort of, you know, 25 minute filler but feels a little bit more than filler weight type of game. Um, in the game, you are a surfer and you are trying to create a wave in front of you that you can surf back into shore. And so you have to do that by playing cards in descending value going back into shore. But that's not all. You're also trying to paddle out your surfer. You might play cards and not even get your surfer out far enough to, to surf those uh, waves, those cards. And so, and, and you're also, uh, you're playing trick cards down on, there's a lot of different ways to score. And the thing that I love about the game is, is it moves really quick. Like the turns are really snappy. You're doing essentially two things on your turn, but the the game ends when this stack of card runs out and it goes so much quicker than you think it's going to. And so it creates a lot of tension in the game where you're like, oh, it's going, the stack is going so fast. I can't do everything I want to do. So you're just, yeah, you can't do everything you want to do. And you're just trying to figure it out. And there's like, you know, it's that fun tension where you're like, oh boy, well, I'm not going to get to all this. So what am I going to prioritize here? I just love that feeling in like a 25 minute game. And so, you know, the theme comes across to it, feels, you know, there's a lot of different surfing things in the game. And so that's, I, I like that theme, especially, you know, living in California. Um, and so, yeah, if you, if you want like a, a family way to welcoming game that has some real decisions, but is crazy easy to teach to anybody, I think the perfect wave is a very good option. I'm gonna take you around a little tour of my house this month. So here you can see multiple surfboards that have fun stories behind them. This is a surfboard I bought with an ex-girlfriend because we thought we were gonna be cool and learn how to surf. And then I think we surfed three times. I think this surfboard has been used three times. So, you know, hobbies. Hobbies are weird. You think you're gonna be real into something and then you break up. And then this one right here, this is actually Mina Suvari's award from American Pie 2. This is the MTV Movie Awards. You, she literally got this as an award. And I live in Los Angeles, and Los Angeles is weird. And sometimes famous people, you know people that know famous people and things like that. And so Mina Suvari was like, I don't want this award. What am I going to use a giant surfboard for? And so we got this. 15 years ago and have just kept it around with us. One of my roommates has just had this traveling from house to house for years. So thanks, American Pie 2. Hey. My number five game of the month is The Art Project, also from The Op. Well, congratulations, Op. Very good November for you. Uh, the Art Project is a cooperative game and it will for sure be on my list of top cooperative games of 2023. I love the theme of the game. There is a sinister organization, the White Hand, that has been stealing priceless artwork from all over and you have to fight them and get the artwork back. And so, you know, that just right there sets it up as like a cool, heisty, fighty sort of cooperative game. It is also one of those cooperative games that is difficult to beat. You want to have, like, you need to like a game that is a real challenge to like this game, which I do. You know, I don't, there are plenty of cooperative games where you're like, wow, 
I felt like I knew we were going to win 30 minutes ago. Not this game. You are either going to win or lose on a knife's edge. I think I've played, I think I've won maybe one out of three games I've played of this. Like a third of the time I've beaten this. So, you know, and I, it's like one of those games where if you make a mistake, you're done. You better, you better figure it out. Resources are really tight, and you need resources to do a lot of different things. You're going to be moving around the board. You're going to be fighting the white hand. You're going to be, um, you know, playing mission cards that are going to get you lives and get you more resources. And everything feels like, oh, if only if we only had one more of these things. If we only had one more of those, we could do this. But you never do. You never have one more. You never have one more of anything you need in this game and so ah, it's just always so tight uh and every time you know you win or lose it comes down to sort of like this last this last turn right and i need the dice to go the way i need them to go in order to win this game right now and let's hope that it does i also like that there's a lot of replayability in the game the there are six different maps and all of the different maps are going to present new challenges a new set of rules a new way to play uh, a new way to beat the white hand and so there's a lot of content in the game i don't think this is one that you will get tired of anytime soon uh, and i like it for that reason so you know theme replayability and the tightness of the cooperation all make the art project a great game for the next part of our tour, I'm going to show you some of the artwork in my house because one of my roommates is both a comedian and a very talented artist. So he likes games too. So you see some, uh, you know, Monopoly type of uh, artwork here. And then also we have a lot of cool pop art lining the walls of our house. He has this cool, unique style where he sort of creates these collages behind stuff and then paints on top of it. And so, I don't know, I just, I love having all this cool original artwork all over the place. I think we all secretly want to be an anti-social influencer. My number three game of November is Dawn of Yulos from Thunderworks Games. I play a lot of games, as you heard, and because of that, I really like games that feel unique, you know, and, and it seems hard to do, right? There are so many games coming out all the time. To do something that feels different than all the other games is difficult, but I really appreciate it, and I gravitate to games like that. Dawn of Yulos for sure feels unique because at first glance, you think it's going to be an area control game. There are different fantasy factions, and they are sort of putting down polyomino tiles to control parts of the board and you're trying to increase their sort of land holdings, their area uh, that they control. Uh, but that's not the game. It's not an area control game. It is actually a economic stock market game because you are not controlling any of the actual fantasy factions. You, This is not my faction getting gaining control of the board. Instead, I can buy stocks in any of the factions, and I am gambling on which factions are going to win in conflicts, because when two factions sort of connect their polyominoes on the board, they fight, and one of them dies, and one of them takes over. And so I'm trying to buy stocks in the one I think that is going to, is going to win those sort of conflicts. You know, so it feels like a game like acquire but for nerdy fantasy factions this is nerdy acquire a little bit and it, it, i just i really like that i will say i think it is kind of a, a a weird teach like the first time i play this game because it isn't what you think it's going to be but it's a game that rewards multiple plays and the more i've played this the more i've wrapped my head around it and really really started to like it even more like the first time i played it i was like oh that was cool that was interesting but i'm not sure about it and then as i've played it more and more i've really really liked it because i sort of you know got used to what the game was learned what the game is and i and i think it rewards multiple plays. So if you uh, like fantasy factions, if you like economic games, this again is like a nerdy economic game and I think it's really unique and fun. I think a lot of people probably would assume that the nerdiest thing in my house, in my bedroom, is the hundreds of board games. 
Not true. The nerdiest thing I have is, boom, framed Gettysburg Address. This is Lincoln's speech from 1863, and I love history, and I have had the Gettysburg Address framed on my wall for over a decade, and I still read it sometimes, and it still gives me goosebumps. It brings tears to my eyes all of the time I read it, because I am truly a history nerd. We can be nerds in all different types of ways. My number two game is Couture from All Play. Uh, this will definitely be on my list of the top small box games of the year because, you know, it's a very small box game, but but packs sort of a big game in there. I think it's even from a line of games that All Play calls like small box big game, and I think they kind of nailed that with this one. It is a bidding uh, auction game, and I like bidding games in general because I like games that uh, not only am I thinking about what I'm trying to go for, I'm also thinking about what other people are going for, what other people are doing, and trying to outsmart them. I love games that allow me to feel clever and, and outsmart the other people at the table. And this is a unique auction game because there are three different cities, New York, Paris, and Tokyo, and in your hand you are arranging cards um, with sort of divider cards in order to bid on New York and, and Tokyo and Paris, there will be cards in each of those cities, and those cards represent either better bidding cards that you can bid on to get for the future, or fashion cards that you are going to use for set collection points. And so how are you going to arrange the cards in your hand? Are you going to go super hard in one city? Or are you going to try to divide in all the other cities? And uh, it just is, you know, it feels unique because we're bidding on all three cities at the same time. You know, you are arranging your hand once. I'm not, I'm not putting down something for a city, hoping it works out, but then, you know, reevaluating other cities. I got to make all those decisions at the start of the round. It plays very quickly too. This is like a 30 minute or under game and there's a lot of different types of set collection in the game. Plus, the artwork is gorgeous. If you are someone that loves fashion even remotely, everything looks really cool in this game and it and I, I think that's a decently unique theme for a board game and something that might bring other people into games might, you know, hey, you like high fashion? Well, here's a game about that. You know, there there are some games about that theme, but they're sort of bigger complex games. This is a game I feel like I could teach to almost anybody and play, and there's still like a lot of interesting decisions in it with the, with the auctioning and the set collection. So yeah, Couture, super fun. This segment is called Grant's Fashion Rex, so let's look inside my closet. A lot of blue, because my mom says it brings out my eyes. And ooh, mostly I just wanted to do this because I got some new shoes yesterday. Look at these sweet shoes, huh? Are you jealous? I'm the type of person that can't wear shoes for the first, like, month that I get them because I just want to look at them and they look so nice and I don't want to mess them up on the streets. And my number one game of November is Apiary from Stonemaier Games. I love this game so much. This is one that I want to play all the time. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it right now. Just talking about it makes me want to play this game. I want to be playing this game right now instead of making this video and talking to you. Because it is a worker placement game, and I love worker placement, as a lot of gamers do. But a lot of worker placement games can be kind of mean, right? Oh, you go to some place, that means I can't go there, you've just messed up my entire turn. But in Apiary, if somebody goes to a spot, you can still go there, but you bump them off of it, and then their worker comes back to them and ticks up in power, becomes a better worker, becomes a worker that can do more things or get you more things. So. It's still, I still need to consider going there. Do I want to bump you? I don't know if I want to make that more powerful to you, but also I need this stuff from that spot. And so 
I think that's a really cool mechanism. It makes worker placement feel very different. And there's also opportunities in this game to like, okay, I need to set myself up to bump myself next turn. You can create your own bumps that then power up your own workers, which is a really fun thing to do. And all of your four, your four value workers, your workers can be one, two, three, or four, and your four value workers get really special abilities. Every spot on the board has a special thing that only a four worker can do, but once you use that four worker, it is then Basically, it goes to hibernation. I like to say that it dies, but Stonemaier, not happy about it. They don't die. Your workers don't die, okay? They just go to sleep for a little while, and you can get them back. So, you know, they just, it, it's a really interesting push and pull where you're like, ah, okay, I want to use this four-value worker, but I need to plan for it because then it means I'm losing a worker until I spend an action to go get some of the workers back and stuff. So I just think that that's a really interesting, you know, push and pull in the game. There's a lot of different ways to score points and I've tried different strategies where I focused on different things and I think all the strategies are viable. So I like that about the game too. Um, and this is another one of those games where the, the turns are snappy. This is one where, you know, it, it, there's a lot of strategy in the game, but if you're playing with people that know, you're definitely playing this in under 90 minutes. And I love that about like a big feeling strategic game, but every turn turn moves pretty quickly and the game doesn't take uh, crazy long at all. So yeah, I mean, Apiary, it's, 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 I think probably going to be on my top 10 of the year too. Uh, I'm going to be doing all of those types of videos on my channel soon. I do not just top 10 of the year, but I do a lot of different category videos, you know, top party games of the year, top, you know, uh, two player games of the year, top family games of the year, top cooperative games of the year. So, you know, make sure to Follow me on my channel if you're interested in all those sort of category videos that are coming up here for the end of the year. And make sure you follow Rado too, because he's always making uh, great videos that's really informative. I, I love uh, learning about new games from this channel. For the last stop on our tour of my house, I'm going to take you to... Oh, gosh. Just got punched in the face by the sun. I didn't know that oh, I should have walked this route before I did this bit. I, I'm taking you to my backyard to show that one of my roommates keeps bees because, you know, apiary is all about bees. So how crazy would that be? That's not true at all. I, I don't have bees at my house. None of my roommates keep bees. I, that would be wild if every one of these themes of these games related to something around my house. I got a lot of respect for somebody who does beekeeping. We need bees in our life. Not me. No, thank you. I don't want a bunch of bees around. Get out of here. That's not for me. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you are having a great holiday season so far. I hope it's full of a lot of games and family and love and friends and all of that sort of stuff. So thanks so much, everybody. I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex.